Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Optimize. My name's Ryan Orr, I'm the owner and installer for Optimum Solar Energy, and I'm super pumped today, I've been looking forward to this one all week. We're gonna be discussing the basics of an off-grid solar system. So with me today, I've brought my trusty mobile skid option. Now this is definitely on the smaller side of off-grid solar systems, but it's super basic and it's just gonna give you a great understanding. Whether it was one of our cabinet builds or a custom build job, the componentry would stay the same. What you'd see is an increase in scale, meaning more battery storage, a larger charge controller, a larger inverter charger, and a larger PV array, meaning the solar. This is a 48 volt system and we're gonna start with our battery storage. Inside our cabinet, we've got two lithium pylon tech, three kilowatt hour batteries. So we've got a total of six kilowatt hours of usable battery storage. Up here is our Victron charge controller. This is responsible for taking the power from the solar and either charging our batteries or sending it back through a Victron inverter charger to then go off and service the AC loads. This particular one says 15070. What does that mean? The 150 refers to the DC voltage input from the solar, and the 70 refers to the charge current. So this particular model can charge at 70 amps. In underneath here is our Victron MultiPlus 2 3000 inverter charger. It's important when you're looking at Victron inverter chargers to remember that this is actually rated in VA, it's not rated in watts. So it's a 2.4 kilowatt inverter. Just something to be mindful of. It has two jobs. It inverts, but it also charges. So it takes the DC from the batteries or the charge controller, inverts it to AC for our house loads. It can also take the AC input from a generator. If we were to run a generator, it would service the AC loads in the house first. Anything surplus would come back through our inverter charger and it would then charge our batteries. Up here is our AC loads inside our little switchboard. On the front of the skid, we've got two Jinko 440 watt N-type panels. So we've got a total of 880 watts worth of solar. And we'll show you in behind here, we've got our Victron Servo GX, which is the brains of the operation. This is where the magic happens, all controlled through our touch screen. Now I know you can't see it from back there. Let's bring you in for a closer look. Okay guys, now that I've brought you in for a closer look, now I'm using Victron's VRM portal, which is Victron Remote Monitoring. Provided your site's connected to the internet, you can see it anywhere in the world. But this is exactly what we'd be seeing on the screen on site, okay? So in this bottom right corner, you can see we're generating 377 watts of solar. Now it's currently overcast, uh, which is why the numbers are quite low. The charge controller is then sending it off to our batteries. So you can see it's receiving the 351 watts from our charge controller. We've got a state of charge of 94% and you can see our inverter charger up here taking care of nine watts of AC load. Now, what I wanna do is if I turn on our trusty microwave, you'll watch what happens with the charge controller and the batteries. So as the AC load begins to creep up, so you'll see, so we've got 920 watts. Now our charge controller is sending the solar straight up to the inverter for the AC load, so 375 watts. And we can see the balance is coming out of our batteries. So we've got 610 watts being fed out of our batteries to take care of the AC load, okay? Now I did say before this was an inverter charger. So up in this top left corner, if we were to turn our generator on, what you would see, it would be coming through our inverter charger, service the AC loads first, and then anything surplus would come back down and charge our batteries, okay? So that takes care of the monitoring aspects of our installation. Some of you may have figured out by now that this is a DC coupled installation, which brings us to one of the questions that we get asked the most. What is the difference between AC coupling and DC coupling? So let's take our battery storage and our charge controller, for example. Both have straight DC input and they're on the DC side of our Victron inverter charger. 
This is DC coupling. If our solar was on the AC side, we'll take a Fronius three kilowatt PV inverter, for example. That's a 3000 VA inverter charger. So there's a one to one uh, rule. The solar would come from the roof through our Fronius inverter, be inverted to AC, service the house loads first, but anything surplus would have to come back through our inverter charger to then be stored as DC in our batteries. So that's AC coupling for solar. If it were battery storage, you take a Tesla Powerwall 2, for example, it receives AC in, converts it to DC for storage, and then brings it back out as AC because it's got its own inverter built in. At Optimum Solar Energy, we always DC couple our solar. The major reason being black start prevention. If you don't know what black start prevention means, Let's say it's night time and you've run out of battery storage and your generator won't kick over. You're effectively what's called black start. The next morning when the sun comes up, it'll hit the panels, come back through the charge controller and the charge controller will kick our inverter charger back over and you'll be up and going again. If you only had AC coupling for the solar, it wouldn't kick over. So you'd be in what's called black start. You'd need to wait until your generator gets up and going to kick your inverter charger back over to then get your solar going again. So every install we do has DC coupling for the solar. On our larger installations, we'd make the case to use both. So DC coupling, because it's more efficient for charging batteries and preventing black start, and AC coupling for the solar as well, because it's more efficient for daytime loads. Okay guys, so in this video, we've discussed the componentry of an off-grid solar system. I've taken you in through the monitoring and I've shown you how it operates. We've discussed the differences between AC coupling and DC coupling. And now I'll just leave you with a couple of tips that I think is gonna help you when you're looking for potential off-grid solar installation companies. So a few things that you should be looking at when you're prospecting uh, companies. I'd be looking at, have they got a website? So for testimonials, make sure that, that they're active. Have they got some past projects? Have they got a physical address? That means that they're more legitimate. They've actually got a place of business. Have they got Google reviews? And are their Google reviews any good? You can save yourself a world of pain just by looking at Google reviews. It's a great insight into how the business conducts themselves and can just red flag some companies straight away. I'd also like to make the case as well, everything we do here at Optimum Solar Energy, I personally design it, supply it, and install it myself. Everything you see here, we come to site and we connect it and we do the electrical components as well. If there's companies out there that are supplying DIY boxes, I wouldn't be touching them at all. Anyone that's too lazy not wanting to come to site is not a person that I'd be wanting to do business with. And in the event that something goes wrong, if you've connected it yourself, are they gonna be there to help you? Or are they gonna be there to point the finger and say, well, it must have been you when you installed it. So just something that you need to consider. Well, that's it guys. I hope I haven't put you to sleep. I hope you've learned something today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.